Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the True North Network. This is your Thursday night fantasy football preview for this week. We got another matchup, which we're hoping is better than last week, as we have the New Orleans Saints travel into the desert to take on the Arizona Cardinals. Now, there's quite a few injuries in this one, but really, these two teams have the potential to be a lot better than the Chicago Washington game we just watched, a lot better than watching the Broncos on primetime again. Now, Hopefully everything seems to land back on its feet after last week. Last week was an absolute gong show. We had players like Deion Jackson leading the running backs. We had Mike Kosicki leading the tight ends. I'm talking, that's like going to see a Batman movie and Robin's the lead guy. That's not going to sound right. That's, that's just everything was upside down. It's not how it works. So we're back on track. We're hoping so this week. We have a nice matchup. My name's Ellis Johnson, and this is your preview. We'll start with the injuries here. We have quite a few injuries actually to go through in this one. Uh, obviously, Hollywood Brown, he's out. He's going to be out for a little while here for that ankle issue. Uh, James Conner is questionable, but he's doubtful to play. Same with Daryl Williams. Uh, so it's looking like Eno Benjamin, who also has a foot issue. Uh, but it looks like he should be good to go to be the main guy again. Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry are also rolled out, as well as Jameis Winston it will not start this game. We'll have Andy Dalton in again. And the other one here is on the defensive side, we have Marshawn Lattimore out. Now, that's huge for potential pass catchers such as DeAndre Hopkins, which we'll get into in a bit. So now, let's get into our must-starts. First and foremost, let's talk about probably one of the most underrated running backs right now. Now, he has been hit in the press because of his legal issues, and that's not great. And another case is looking like they're trying to sue him for $10 million now. And apparently the video is quite atrocious. So, But that's with that said, we're going to focus on the football side. The football side of it, though, Alvin Kamara has been great the last two weeks. Now that he's fully back and healthy from from his injury, he's been truly superior to a lot of others. His usage is off the charts. I'm talking he has 202 rushing yards in the last two games with 4.8 to carry. He's had 15 targets and 12 receptions for 116 yards over these last two games, and it's not looking like it's slowing down. The best part, though, is he has yet to find Pater. And so – because he hasn't found the end zone, people are kind of looking over him because he's putting in very good numbers, but heavy on yards, and it's about 15 to 20 fantasy points. But as soon as he starts finding the end zone, he's going to be great. In fact, I'm calling for the pie shop to be open this week for Alvin Kamara because it might be an easy call, but he's going to get in. He's getting way too much usage not to get in. And this Cardinals defense is allowing the seventh most rushing yards per game. So I think he's going to get in the end zone. I think he's going to have a very nice week. Uh, he's a set to jet all the way, start him 100%. Next, we have DeAndre Hopkins. Now, apparently he's on a pitch count, so be a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried about this. However, the thing is, is that with Cooper Cup, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, and I'm missing someone, but there's another really good receiver on by right this week, you probably have to play him. It's exciting to have him back. He's been posting a whole bunch on social media about how he's ready to go. He's going to be fully, he's going to be fully back. He's going to be great. However, he did show up that in a video saying that, you know, he was content with his not having huge stats last year because it opened everyone else up. I don't like hearing that from my fans, you guys. But the thing is, without Marshawn Lattimore, DeAndre Hawkins, going to be nuclear. He's back to be nuke. Start him up. I would at least. It'll be exciting to see him back on the field. Also, we have Zach Ertz. Now, Zach Ertz is supposed to be one he was going to be taking a nosedive with the return of Hopkins. However, he's been getting – a whole bunch of targets, and he's a tight end four on the season. And without Hollywood Brown, he's the tried and true option here. He's going to be great. With Goddard, Higby, er, and Irv Smith all on by, you know, he is he should be played in all leagues, and he's going to be a very good play. Last but not least, we have another Arizona Cardinal. We have Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray, I don't want to put him here. He hasn't been good. You watch this team. This offense has been horrific. I'm talking they put three offensive points up against Seattle. Seattle was leading points left and right. They allowed 45 to Detroit. And, I yes, I love Detroit. Don't get me wrong. But we're talking, come on, Kyler. you got to get your stuff together. And, in fact, there's a new Call of Duty coming out this week. And that's a little worrisome because he is not good on Call of Duty weeks. So, Kyler, you made the must start, though, solely because of QB6 on the season. And especially with the bye weeks, you're a top option. But come on, please, pull through here. Burrow just torched these guys for a huge fantasy football day. I'm hoping you do the same. Let's pick up the socks here. Next, we have our solid starts. Now, it's actually only solid start because we only got one. And it's Eno Benjamin of the Arizona Cardinals. Without Connor most likely not playing and Darrell Williams most likely not playing, he's going to be the guy. 
And he's a solid start solely because there's not many backs are going to get the amount of volume that he's going to get, even in a tougher matchup. And like I said, I'm hoping Kyler can turn on the Jets and he has a good shot to find the end zone too. If Connor's active, however, he becomes a solid start, but I'm not super stoked. I, and it's hard to call him a must start, especially coming off this injury. But, you know, plug him in if he's the only guy in town. He's going to be a nice volume play this week. Now over flex considerations. So technically James Winston is going to be active, but it doesn't sound like he's going to start. So we're going to say Andy Dalton. Either way, they're actually both quite similar for fantasy football. The only difference is you might see more Taysom Hill with Andy Dalton. You might see a little less with James Winston. But if we see Dalton again, you know, he's not a great option. But the thing is, is against his Arizona team, who hasn't been amazing on for defense, they're allowing the 11th most fantasy points to the quarterback position. And they haven't been good all season. And the thing is, is that what I'm worried about is I'm worried that only Chris Olave will be the only one in town. And the thing is, is, we'll talk about it later, but he'll have Brian Murphy on him. So whoever the quarterback is, is a low-end QB2 option, having to rely probably on Trey Quan Smith and Mark Adams Conway a lot more than they should. Another flex consideration we got is Rondell Moore. Now, Rondell Moore has been quite involved. It's really nice to see. Now that Nuke's back, too, and you're getting Robbie Anderson in the mix, too, he's going to really roll, run with the slot role, which is where he thrives. He has 18 targets and 13 receptions for 109 yards over the last two weeks after returning from injury. This should continue once again. He's another kind of tried and true option. And in fact, because I called a really obvious one with Alvin Kamara, some people w- w- wouldn't say it's deep enough. I'm saying pie shops open Rondell Moore. Second career touchdown. It's happening this week. Book it. All right. Next, we got Taysom Hill. Hell, is he a tight end? I don't know. The thing is, is he probably don't have another option if you're rostering him. Fire him up in your tight end spot. The only thing is, don't come to me complaining if he only gives you a goose or a two or a three. But he could give you 30, and then you'll be dancing. Now, the next is Consider City. Yes, there's one name we have only, haven't talked about on his own yet, and that's Chris Olave. Yes, he's back from injury. Yes, he's the only one in town. I am terrified of Byron Murphy. This is not a knock on Chris Olave. I think he's an excellent receiver who has all the potential to be the best of this draft class. But Byron Murphy has been shut down. Over the last two weeks, A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf have had almost identical lines, combining for five receptions and 66 yards together over the last two weeks. And those are star receivers. Olave could be that. He's not that now. And I'm terrified of Byron Murphy. He has been incredible. Him and Patrick Sertan have just been shut down all over the place. So you can start him if you want. Just want to warn you here. I'd be looking somewhere else. I'm scared. He could have a big game, but I I don't I hate going into my weekend down with a poor performance. And I'm worried Chris Olave is going to have one of those. Next, we got Traycon Smith and Marcus Callaway. You can't start them. This he is not enough volume. We don't know one of them might have a day. We don't know who it's going to be. Just don't even touch him. And same with A.J. Green and Robbie Anderson. A.J. Green just hasn't getting enough volume. And Robbie Anderson, he's brand new to the team. Maybe he catches a big touchdown. You don't want to bank on that. You want to see at least what this team will do with him. It's a short week. He's had three days with the team. Can't imagine he does a lot. Boom. Ellis's picks. Let's get into that. Now, last week, for the second time this year, we went 0-2. And, and I hate that because I, I really thought Chicago should have won that game. They looked better. If it wasn't for that muff punt, they were just going to hold on. It was going to be a sloppy game. I'll admit, I let my heart get into it. I picked the over. But next time, I'll keep in mind that it's a Thursday night football game, and these tend to be not that great. Speaking of, this one is at 1.5 point favorite for the Arizona Cardinals at home. That's tight. We have another really tight matchup in this one. The over-under is set at 44.5. Now, the unders have hit on Thursday. Every week but one, which was Pittsburgh-Cleveland this year. And I'm going to ride with that again. I I can see Kyler turning on the Jets, but the thing is that I don't see the Saints having the options to compete at at that level uh, when it comes to a shootout. So I think it's going to be low scoring, and I don't think it's going to hit 44. So I don't think it's going to hit 45. Now, the other thing, though, is even though I said I don't, I'm worried about the Saints' offense, I love their defense, and I don't think Kyler's look good. I love the Saints with the plus one, or the plus one and a half. I think they're just going to game manage. They're going to work it through. They're going to get Kyler frustrated. And if you get Kyler frustrated and he's going to go play Call of Duty, you're going to win that game. I don't love it. It is truly a toss-up. But I do think the Saints have looked like the better team, even with Andy Dalton out, um, under center. 
And there you have it. There's your preview. We have the pie shop open for Alvin Kamara and Rondell Moore for the second time in his career. We also have the Saints on the plus points as well as the under on the 44 and a half. Catch me here next week. Amari Jackson traveling to the Bay to take on Tom Brady, two of the best quarterbacks in the game. Let's see what they do. I'll catch you here next week. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your football. My pretty baby kissed another Stop my dead up on my feet